Joining me right now, Chairman of President Trump's Council of Economic Advisors, Kevin Hassett. Good to see you again, sir. Yeah, same here, Trish. So can they pull this together? I mean, you got people that are all over the place. Oh, sure. Susan Collins talking about 21 percent. The president has said he's not going to budge beyond 20 percent for corporate taxes. Where's this all going to shake out? Well, again, the, the president has made it clear that he's got a few objectives that are non-negotiable. One of them is the 20 percent rate. And this is regular order. This is the normal process. You don't have to have it become law before you get to read the bill. You know, they're arguing about stuff like the individual mandate. And I think that's a good, healthy sign for democracy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the best news is that all the intelligence we're getting is that the bill is moving forward at a steady pace, that it's very likely that it's got the votes that it needs to pass both the House and the Senate. And that's really good news for America's workers. Would Roy Moore dropping out of the race affect you guys? You know, I, I, I'm not a, a, a head counter in the, in the Senate. I'm an economist. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I understand that, that people are quite confident they've got the votes to get through both houses. So as an economist, let me ask you this, Kevin, because one yes. of the things that troubles me a little bit, and by the way, I, I think you get a lot of good stuff in there, a lot of really good stuff. And mm -hmm. getting corporate taxes lower, it's all moving sure. in the right direction. Repatriation, these are great things. And, and I would imagine it would be great things for the market. But let me ask you about penalizing employees over business owners, which is that a business owner can pay a rate of 25 percent mm -hmm. and be able to deduct state and local taxes. But if you're an employee living in New Jersey or New York or California or a lot of other states for that matter, too, you're not going to be able to have that same set of luxuries. Uh, you know, you're, you're potentially right. paying as much as 39.6 percent plus state plus local. And, uh, you know, you might start scratching your head and say, hey, maybe I should be a business owner instead of an employee. <laughs> and I just wonder why the government is, is, is giving so much preference to business owners over the people that are out there working for those business owners. Well, well let, let's start from where we are. What's going on now is that we're giving special preferences to the high, sta high tax states that have really big taxes, right? And so those states are basically getting bigger tax deductions than the low tax states that are running themselves responsibly. And President Trump and the team think that the government needs to get out of that business of putting their finger on the scale favoring the high-tax states. Now, the problem with the business side is that for a small business, what we're trying to do is tax their profits. And when you want to calculate their profits, you need to allow them to deduct all of their costs. And the state and local tax is a tax that they're going to have to pay that should come out before you calculate their profits. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we would all be better off... <laughs> <laughs> At least in the TV business, starting our own production companies and I guess moving to Texas or Florida. Um, yeah. But you, you understand how it's going to penalize people that are going to work for a company while uh, simultaneously giving preference to business owners. Uh, and, and maybe that's exactly what you're trying to do because you're rewarding entrepreneurship. I just think that it's coming at the cost of hurting some folks uh, more so. But let me move on to the private okay, equity sure. loophole, which has been a little bit of a sticking point for me because I, I remember the president vividly, and we've shown the tape over and over again, of him out there on the campaign trail saying, you know what, we're going to close this loophole that exists for fat cats on Wall Street. But they haven't closed mm -hmm. it, Kevin. Is there any intention of doing so, or do you just think it can't get through reconciliation if they were to try it? You know, that, that's one of the details that's still being worked out. And uh, the private equity treatment right now is part of the normal partnership tax law. The partnership tax law, as we just talked about, is on the table and evolving. And so I look forward to seeing the, the final bill. You know, the president's been very clear about his preference on this. But again, there are three non-negotiables for the president. It's the 20 percent rate, it's simplification, and it's the middle class tax cut. And everything else, he's really hoping that Congress <laughs> negotiates that and works it out and gets a, a bill together that can pass. So, Kevin, when you say that everything else is negotiable, Negotiable, um, does that mean that the SALT you know, is also negotiable right now, state and local tax deduction? Well, I think that the White House's preferences are clear, but the, the biggest point is if we achieve the president's three objectives and have a bill that becomes law, then that's great for America's workers. It'll mm -hmm. give them a big pay increase, and that's the top priority for everybody right now. <clears throat> Let me just ask you one more question. I know we're short mm -hmm. on time, but one of okay, the, sure. the, the other things that, that came my way is I was looking at the GDP, um, the, how much GDP New York and California were accountable for, and it, it comes out to roughly 22 percent of the nation's overall economy. Mm -hmm. So sure. as an economist, let me just ask you, if you actually see New York and California decline in GDP because people don't have as much money to spend because they got to pay their state, they got to pay their local, and they got to pay their federal tax, do you run the risk that this will not have the intended consequence of growing the nation's overall economy, at least in the short term? 
Well, I think that there are two parts of the tax bill. One is the corporate rate uh, reduction that's going to lure a lot of businesses back even to places like California and, and New York. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is the individual side, which is a big middle class tax cut for most people, even in California and New York. And so I think that the people at the very, very top bracket in California and New York who lose the state and local income tax deduction are not going to be super happy about that. But the hope is that now that the federal government is no longer putting its finger on the scale of those states, that maybe those people will demand reform of their state right. governments. Right. And, and, and maybe make them more, more you'll efficient. see more fiscal responsibility from some of those state <laughs> One governments. One would hope, right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. Thanks, uh, we'll keep uh, checking with you. Thanks. Thanks.